Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better in veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv. So I-V-D-I, International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash inv, and we'll get you the information that you need. Hi, everyone. Hope all of you veterinarians and technicians are having a fantastic week this week. We're going to carry on with our performance podcast theme here for another episode or so. And I think this is critical to add on to what we talked about the first two episodes. And again, we talked about health, nutrition, meditation, and exercise being tenants of performance period and certainly sets the stage for your best performance. The other thing that we can add into that in a subset is creating the environment for you to utilize all the benefits that you get from those things and then be able to perform. Now, when we're in our dental suite and we're performing our procedures on our patients, there's a lot of interaction there and there is a lot of focus that is required in order to make that happen. And patients that are under anesthesia and us trying to minimize anesthesia time make it a very important time that we need to eliminate anything that might distract us from that goal and that end result of a, an efficient procedure and a procedure where the anesthesia time is minimized while the patient is as safe as possible during that whole time. And in order to do that, we need to think about what in that environment might distract us. Now, one thing that is a bit distracting if you're trying to read a book or you're doing something in that room, which is not your primary focus, obviously, but if someone is in there trying to do something other than what you're doing, all of the monitors, (laughs) those are significantly distracting, being able to shut those out in an environment where you were trying to read a research paper, you were trying to write a blog post, or you're trying to write an email to a colleague, whatever it might be. Those are super distracting, but they are essential to focus on within that operatory. The things that we don't want distracting us in either environment is our devices. And we've been conditioned as to respond to that text message, respond to that phone call. And that happens multiple times during the day. Takes us away, especially in the operatory when we're trying to focus and we need that focus in order to be the best that we can possibly be, which is that is when we need to be our best. So any distractions that are extraneous to the monitors, extraneous to our visual, tactile, any contact that we have with that patient that compromises that needs to go. So the recommendation for that is certainly to 
leave those cell phones out of the room. Just take and have them in a separate room. Super easy to do that. Have them on a setting that cannot be heard in, from the operatory. The other thing that's a little bit more difficult would be to place those devices on a do not disturb mode. Many people who are in in the generation that grew up with tech, that grew up with cell phones, that had them when they were kids, obviously know how to do that and can manipulate that back and forth <clears throat> or not. Maybe they have, and certainly I know a lot of people and myself included uh, that had had distractions with texts and things at times when I didn't need to be distracted. So <clears throat> there are people and certainly are people that don't want to stop those distractions because they obviously get a benefit from that. What is that benefit? Back to the old dopamine hit. You get that positive surge of that chemical that not only gives you a, a, a little bit of euphoria, it also trains you to do that again. So we know now that dopamine is not as much of a feel-good chemical as it is to allow us to find the things that give us uh, pleasure. And a good example is a Bushman that is on foot in a, an environment where they ha they're having to find food and they come across a blueberry bush or a mulberry bush or some bush that's out in the out in the range and dopamine helps them with that hit helps them to find that pleasure again so whether it be a harmful chemical whether it be a food source for a bushman the the function of dopamine now is known to help induce that pleasure more often. And that's what all of the social giants have done to manipulate that into their technology. And it's super harmful for many reasons, but it's very devastating in an operatory environment. So do whatever you can to eliminate that. And I would also suggest too, that anytime that you're working in an environment that's not that, that you turn your devices off, don't have them on you, uh, mainly being uh, work that you need to sit down and really do that requires some time. For me, it would be preparing for a new presentation or writing a, an outline within Keynote for a new course those things, I have to have no interruptions and have to have that constant focus that it requires to finish that task and finish it effectively and finish it as quick as possible. I know you guys have heard about being in the zone. Being in the zone, whether it be sports, and that's probably where you've seen that more commonly, or whether it be cognitively, and a good example of this are uh, coders. Uh, coders have to have uninterrupted time for extended periods of time to be able to cognitively grasp all that they're doing without interruption. So that's a perfect example of someone that is that gets in a zone, and if they're interrupted, the studies show it takes them 15 minutes to get back to a, a 30 second interruption takes them 15 minutes to catch back up and get back in that task. So that it, those are examples of activities that you don't want to get interrupted in so that you can maybe reach that zone or reach that flow state. Some of you have heard it referred to as flow, which is now the, the, the more recent term. And to describe that very briefly, that is a period of time where you go through a prolonged uh, minute prolongation, usually seven minutes is average, 
where you're frustrated, where you sit down, you're trying to put together a, let's say, a letter to your boss to get a raise. And it takes you quite some time to just get down and get things down on paper and get in the zone where you haven't been interrupted for that five to seven minute period. The problem with that is of getting in that flow and getting in that zone. Most people by that seven minutes have that phone sitting right next to them or they have their other computer tabs open. And it's so much, it's so easy to say, Oh, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go and I'm going to check Facebook or I'm going to check my messages or check my email and nothing could be more counterproductive to reaching that flow state than undergoing that frustration for that entire time to actually drop into that zone. And you can't do that being interrupted every five to to, to seven minutes. That dopamine comes at the flow state. It should not come from devices. It should not come from quick fixes. It needs to come from the flow state, come from the zone, which enhances everything that you're doing and can literally increase your productivity by 500% if you can get there. So eliminating that disruption in that kind of activity is super important to reaching that level where you can keep going for an hour, hour and a half, two hours in that task. And it's like it, it just passed by in, in a 30 minute period. <clears throat> the time goes away and you're so involved with the task that you forget about everything else and you're able to focus. So utilizing that and that concept can be critical in things outside the operatory as well as inside the operatory. So I hope that little bit on disrupting those distractions helps and we may visit that in a future episode but I think it's incredibly important for us to really stop and think about for each day, how many times are we interrupted? What is the thing that is interrupting us during that day? So keep that in mind. Try to implement it. Maybe write those things down and, and eliminate them from your day. And you're going to find that you're going to be much more productive and your patients are going to be much happier because of it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you take home some of those concepts and put them into action and use them not only in your dentistry service, but also in your life. Pass them on to your colleagues, pass them on to your friends that you think might benefit as well. So until next week, have a great week and we'll see you then. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash inv.